Welcome to the Growth Lab Podcast, where we talk about how to get more clients, find new business opportunities, and win more cleaning contracts. I'm your host, Matt Harris, and I run the Growth Lab, a sales and business development consultancy for commercial cleaning businesses. I'm trying to help a thousand cleaning business owners scale to seven figures and document my journey along the way. In today's episode, I chat with Ilza Weidman. Ilza ran a successful domestic and commercial cleaning business for 11 years, and now she's known as the cleaning coach. She helps business owners earn what they're worth and work smarter, not harder, so that they can become strong. Free. Whether you're a cleaning business owner that has trouble retaining staff or you need more customers, it also can help you from an overworked and underpaid business owner to growing a 100k plus cleaning business. We talk about how she started with domestic cleaning before pivoting into commercial, how she trained her team to develop obsessive cleaning habits and deliver a high quality service, why you need to develop a culture of customer service for your cleaning business, why she sends out sales letters with stamps and envelopes instead of emails, and the one decision that had the biggest impact on the growth of her cleaning business. Ready? Let's dive in. I am here with Ilza Whiteman. Really looking forward to having this chat. Ilza, thank you very much for joining me today. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you very much for having me. No worries. Look, I would like you to share just how you got started in the cleaning industry, because I know there's a pretty interesting backstory. And then we'll we'll take us all the way up to how you're coaching clients today. So let's go. No problem. So I started my cleaning business. I was actually a bakery manager at the time, mm-hmm. and I was working so many hours. It was insane. I had to, well, I was forced to take like a week's holiday because I I didn't take holiday for a long time. And my current husband was building a horse stable. And I was like, huh, I'm bored. A little bit of a workaholic. (laughs) Let me go and help him build a horse stable. I was very interested in the horse that was there. And actually, as it happens, the customer went out and she was like, here, if you want a cup of tea, go make one. And I did. And I noticed she had two Belfast sinks there. And I was like, wow. I can clean them. (laughs) They look a bit, mm. any Uh, case, while the kettle was boiling, I was cleaning them and I was playing with the dogs and helping her get the horse and everything. And she was just like blown away. She was like, I've never seen my things this clean ever. And I was like, okay, take it back a little bit because I was just bored really. And she offered me a job there and then for like 30 hours to clean a massive house, to clean their house, to do the horses, to the dog and just to help them generally with everything. So I was like, huh interesting and I was like I don't know I've never cleaned in my life I cleaned at home my mum's South African so of course we were like with the web disciplines <laughs> at home we need to be able to do these things so so I took that opportunity to purely because I just was curious I was like I can have my own business I love cleaning I'm passionate about it still till today very OCD and and that's kind of like how it started and within a month I had so many clients I was like overblown but I did start literally earning like £9.50 an hour and I thought that was amazing at the time I was only earning well I was only £25,000 as a bakery manager then so it was a bit of a drop in pay but the lifestyle changed because although I earned less I had a lot more freedom to and and met people you know it was fun it was a lot of fun and what did you focus on doing first did you go into domestic stuff did you jump straight into commercial like where where did you start so it was all domestic to start off with because, of course, this customer, they spoke to all of her friends. <laughs> and it was like literally that, like within two weeks, I had so many phone calls come in. And then I wanted to expand because I knew, obviously, I needed the staff to expand because I was getting all these phone calls. I struggled in the beginning because I couldn't get my head around the concept of I was cleaning so well. Like my customers were like, oh, my God, like this is really amazing. And I was like, this is just cleaning. But to get other people to clean my way, that's where I struggled because I was like, whoa, this is like a minefield. And I eventually got to kind of like I created a book where I like was pointing at everything because I thought maybe it's a language barrier. Because when I first came over to from as uh, to England, I couldn't speak a word of English. So I had to learn English. Oh, wow. okay. And my husband, I literally met him three days after I landed. And then I had to learn English. I still don't know how we coped. Must have been good at something, right? But anyway, yeah. so And then I think about six months into my business, I I had about two or three staff. That that was a bit slower for me to get the staff to stay and to train them. I struggled a little bit with that. But I sent out some letters and I then got like sales letters, obviously, I was experimenting with because everybody said bulky mail really works. So I went, oh, I'm going to I'm going to give this a go. And I did. And it worked. So I got quite a few commercial contracts in quite quickly. I say commercial office based, estate agent based. And then that grew. And I found that was was easy easier really to be quite honest so and then I did both of them and then I separated the two so domestic and then commercial because I still struggled a lot not struggled a lot with the domestic cleaning but to get that level until I learned 
that you need to sometimes not be so perfect with everything. And that's when things changed and they for the better. Oh, wow. So tra- going back to the training aspect that, you know, when you start yourself, obviously you have your own standards and it's difficult to kind of convey those standards to staff as, as you bring them on. So how, apart from the, the book, was the book that you create, was that kind of like a, a manual, a guide to sort it's, of? It's a pretty big book. I, th- okay. I found that when you have a tap with kind of like the turny taps and underneath the turny taps, I always have trouble like explaining to people what these things are called. Yeah. And right at the bottom, there's a little ledge and I'm like, what is this called? And nobody can ever answer this for me. So when I say to staff, underneath the tap handle, there's a little edgy before you get to the actual base of the tap. And like, you need to clean there. <laughs> anyway, so I created the book, which is literally an arrow and point at things. And it, it makes people aware of all the places. And I basically created like a point system. Like if you're going to look at okay. a tap to clean it, like the handle as the handle base, then underneath the handle, then on top of the handle, like there's a point system. So a tap has... 10 spots that we're going to clean it's not just a tap Mm. so that's kind of what I developed but I think the biggest thing for me was learning that when a customer is happy that's good enough it's not always about me because I always had so many complaints but my customers weren't complaining so that's how I learned that if you dropped your standards a little bit and I know it sounds horrible but I had such high standards I was exhausting trying to get everybody else to be that good and it, it, nobody can sustain that. So it's just being good enough to deliver a high quality service, but yeah. not and concentrate on the whole service rather than just the cleaning. So okay. be really good at the service you provide with the cleaning. The yeah. cleaning doesn't have to be that good then. How, how did you end up like finding the right sort of balance in terms of cleaning standards and then bringing in the customer service element as well? So at the right, well, basically I created like a system um, sure. which I kind of like got my customers or like email sent out and everything to the point where my customers were responding very positively to me. So you, know, you do a lot of business and nobody, like you know, your customers never email you back. Like, oh my God, that's really good. We don't expect that. But what my system does is build up this who you want to be like all the emails and everything i did was done so that the customer felt amazing like a customer don't remember what you do or say but it's how you make them feel so in that basis it's exactly the same with the cleaning it's how you make them feel like every once a month like all of my cleaners across the company you had to do one certain thing that wasn't on the checklist or expected just to make that customer feel they're still getting that value and they value mm-hmm. and that you appreciate them. So it's little things, literally like one month, D-line scale, all kettles. And it's simple, but customers were sharing it going, oh my God, look at my kettle inside. I've never yeah. seen it this clean. And it, this is about how you make your customer feel once again, rather than, oh, here's a service. I come and clean, pay my invoice. It was all done with a lot of love in between because I wanted the customers to feel like we really cared. We yeah. didn't feel that. And that's kind of like how it was based. But also, it's it's not about how amazingly good the standards are, apart from deep cleaning. I sure. always I felt that it was really hard to clean your to teach your staff to do a deep clean, a thorough deep clean, because we did the student cleans. And yeah. then can you now clean a little bit less in this domestic property? Yeah. <laughs> so that was really hard, a very big learning curve for me because I was like, can you clean less now? Can you clean less? So I separated this two. And okay. the minute I did, office cleaning is not the same as end of tenancy, it's not the same as students, and it's not mm. the same as domestic. Now there is there are some staff that can do this amazingly well. I mean, I did, I knew the difference. But to teach this to people, like when you do a domestic, this is what you do. And when yeah. you do office, this is what you do. And that's what my book basically did. I had a you know, tenancy book and a domestic book and an office okay. book. And they pointed and said, this is what you need to concentrate on. And they took the book with them and it was laminated. So there's no excuses. Oh, I couldn't do this. <laughs> this is the materials you use. This is where you clean and use the point system basically to clean. And did you like, did you have... A, a training session or, or sort of onboarding oh. where you kind of watched and saw how they did and, and if oh, yeah. so how long was how long was that that um, it, training it was, so the, the the general training will take up to like two weeks three weeks depends okay. i mean i always try to get it as little as possible so like two weeks training when i first started that was hard as well because i literally just had people coming to my house to train because i was yeah. like i didn't yeah. want to take them like into customers houses and then the customers see this and then i have to explain this to the customer and I lost a few customers through that so then I started like just on my own <laughs> invite people to my house I mean, I don't your house I must have been spotless it. at all times regardless <laughs> well the point so and then I would basically say to them this is the materials I like to use 
there's a bathroom, a couple of activities to the best of your ability, but not an end of tenancy clean, so not spotlessly clean, so it's everything's brand new, just a normal everyday house clean, what you think it is. And then I used to judge them from there. And okay. then eventually as my business grew, obviously that's how I did it. Then I had like basically we were training obviously 10, 12, 12, 20 staff at a time where we then had videos already rigged up and we will take okay. them through normal training. So we had a house that we trained them on. It was normally, that sounds horrible, one of the staff's houses then we literally okay. had a road because in my company, the member of the staff, the staff member of the month got our house cleaned that, oh, nice. that month. Oh my God, what a great incentive. <laughs> so so if, awesome. so I had to, and then obviously we, we did that then. So I very much involved my staff and was like, how do we do this, guys? We've got this problem. What do you think? And yeah. it's not necessarily about taking that ideas, but they had some amazing ideas. So we were building the company together and I was really close to them, but also not so close to them. It's obviously that barrier that you need, which yeah. I learned the hard way as well. Dive into that a little bit more because I, I know what you mean. I When I started in particular sort of the early days i always felt that the people that were helping me to clean i sort of owed them something right because they're helping me do this with my business so i always went over the edge in terms of being friendlier rather than having that dividing line yes. and it, it was difficult then to kind of separate both in, until you learn from your experience but how how did you like manage to transition that did you did you have quite a clear line from the start or is that something that you you kind of you had to figure out as well people pleaser definitely still struggle with that i would rather be quiet than somebody be happy and somebody be happy than up upsetting somebody and yeah. once again i think it got to a stage in my business where i just got fed up with people taking the mickey fed up with all the illnesses and i just started standing up for myself in a point of if you do that again but also I had to learn and invest in myself a lot throughout this process, which is how to listen to people, how yeah. to talk to people, how to be a leader. Like I spent probably, and I'm not to say this to frighten people, but I'm not going to mention that, but a lot of money on courses on how to be better and within myself, but also what I provided. So because English wasn't my first language yeah. and because I was South African, I had this thing where I really struggled with people thinking I'm very abrupt. Like I used okay. to say, clean there, that's not good enough. Clean that mm. again, clean there, that's not enough. And then they go, oh, I'm just going to go for two weeks holiday. I'm like, I like it. So I had this two different sides of me. So yeah. I had to learn that when the business makes a decision for the business, like my feelings can't interfere. You have to separate the heart from the head. Yeah. So this is what my business needs. And I started asking myself, with this decision, is your bank account going to be happy with you? Or not? So which one would you prefer? And which one is going to get you down? Because mindset also is something that we set. It's not something that we have. So yeah. we need to learn that if I want this 100,000K business or I want a million pound business, like how, let me start acting now like that person that's going to be doing that because we need to practice to yeah. be there. We can't do what we do now and want these big results. We we need to climb that steps and become better one step at a time. And yeah. that's how I literally learned to deal with this was investing in myself, leadership. There was no courses or anything like this out there when I did it. This was all different courses that I learned sure. and every different aspect. Like how do you really listen to somebody and how do you like involve your, your staff members and I remember reading this book, The Dream Manager, which okay. I it told all my all my staff, to, all my students to get. Which it teaches you how to really do amazing things for your staff and really involve them and just be the best boss ever, but be yeah. the best boss ever, not the best person ever, because this is not about favors. Yeah. This is about you providing something for them, but they providing something back. And if you pay them a certain amount, you pay them to turn up with nice clothes and to respect you and to do what they need to do. And everything is, you're paying them to do everything. So it's just, it's just learning through the process of heart and head needs to be separate. I guess it, it is quite a steep learning curve because especially if, when you just start with very little previous experience of, of running a business, it, it becomes, it's not your first nature, right? Because your, your first instinct is, shit, I need to make sure that like, I can get the work done. That, that's kind of the first instinct. And then once you, you're, you're settling into that, then you kind of think, okay, now I've got some consistency with the work. Like what else, what other tools do I need to add to my armory to be able to start building this business? And how, like, was there, was, how can I ask this? Was there like a 
a clear distinction once you had gone through that transfer from you know day one where you were over friendly with your staff to then giving them a new sort of operating procedure did how i'm not really asking this very well how, how did you how did you transfer from being over friendly on, on in one instance to then yeah. having more structure in place and how did you involve your staff in in that transition so that they were still buying into what you were looking to well <laughs> i learned the hard way i lost quite a few staff but i had a supervisor that was i basically was on my side and i said to yeah. her, how do we do this how do we incorporate every little thing because all of a sudden i was having all of these rules like all of a sudden you have to ask permission mm. for holiday and it's like what we have to ask permission before they walked all over me and I came yeah. to August, I had like 120 student teams and I was like, what do I do now? But it's, so I did lose a few because, mm. and I knew, I knew that if I just had more respect for myself, that that's what I need to focus on first, because that meant that I had my boundaries and my boundaries was, this is what is good for my business. This is what's going to happen. And this is not about being nasty to them and like, ah, oh my God, like, this is all about, like, you have to explain to them. The, the process but thoroughly and why are we doing it and I think when they generally felt that I still lost some because some people weren't very happy with the fact that they now had to actually listen to me I struggled with the, the fact as well that for my staff to have respect to me I don't think they did in the beginning because I was people pleasing and yeah. I was letting them get away with stuff so I already had a few staff they were like just doing whatever they did doesn't matter what I say they were late oh I hate lateness like with a passion and they, yeah. they knew that and then therefore they would do that of course too so this had to happen like a little bit of a break in my company. And I was like, if you're with me, you're with me. This is what I want to achieve. If yeah. you're not, I wish you well. I'm like nothing against you, but I don't want to take you ahead. Yeah. We need to be a good fit. We need to both be on the same page, share this vision. And I want you to want to grow as much as I want to grow. Because yeah. um, they were given incentives to get customers in and to get other staff members in. And I paid really well. I wanted to be the best boss. But I yeah. knew by doing that. I could afford to say, no, I'm sorry. If you're not going to play by the rules, then go and play somewhere else. I have to admit, looking back on it, I, I didn't <laughs> do that, any of that very well at all. No. Um, I struggled. But I think for me, I had to learn everything the hard way. But yeah. I think once the lesson sunk, it was like, huh, wish I knew this before kind of thing. But this is, and this is what we now teach other people, right? It's yeah. that boundaries. Like, how do we deal with these things? As you have to have that boundary in place. And I guess that that kind of provided you then with a platform to continue growing your your business the right way, right? Rather than on uh, the smart sort of shaky way. foundations. So by then the foundations was in place and I saw things, oh, it, it was just, it was like a relief. Like I could actually sleep. Like when the customer pays you on time, you don't know, you sort that system out. The first system you need to sort out is yeah. how much you get paid. And of course, we obviously they have to pay on time. Then there's the staff, like just for the staff to turn up to work and to respect you. Those two things is the two biggest stress that I think anybody has. Yeah, and if you yeah. can sort those two systems out first, then everything else becomes so much easier. But because you're working smarter, like if you still have the same amount of work and you'll have more, but you work smarter, so it never seems that way. It seems like it's flowing. It's flowing yeah. smoothly rather than emotional, up and down, getting the staff member, and then you get that emotional hit of getting down and then uh, getting this new customer, five new customers, 10 new customers, 20 new customers, and then you get a drop because one staff member drops you. I was there quite a long time. I, I would say about a year, I struggled with that. And I was like, how do I get out of this? scenario and the emotional drop that constantly happened and I remember searching for jobs because I was like this is hard but I I dug deep and I because I knew my love for cleaning and I knew what my customers what I was delivering those customers were so super happy with my my staff going in cleaning like yeah. I would get so many messages like just all the time from obviously some customers not all of them yeah, but yeah. And that drove me like I could give this to more people and the biggest mindset thing is, is that if you're not out there looking, getting those customers, you're doing some customers an injustice. Because The thing is, there's people out there struggling to get good cleaners. And if you're yeah. really good cleaner and you're passionate about what you do, you're doing everybody, you're like, you're hiding. And that's not what you should be doing. Yeah, it's not yeah. about selling your services, it's about offering your services to the right customers at the right time. But of course, you can change people's lives with this. And yeah. we used to have a, a shirt that actually said it back. We change lives. Ask me how. Nice. <laughs> that was our, that's, what our, that's what our shirt looked like because we did and we believed in it. Yeah. No, that's really good. So look, talk to me a little bit more about that. So you mentioned earlier that you sent out, was it sales letters or emails? 
No, sales letters. So letters. when I first started, I was a little bit not good with English writing. <laughs> sure. I had to get everything proofwritten and it cost me an absolute fortune. And my poor husband at the time was like just proofreading everything. So yeah. I started writing letters because I learned bulky mail was a thing. Okay. And I know everybody was like, mm, bulky mail isn't such a big thing. And I went, no, hang on a minute. I can I can make this work because I read this book, which is explosive marketing. And I can't, I can't remember who actually wrote it right now but that's fine i'll make a note Ooh. really good marketing book and it's just about being outrageous it's about being different and standing out and like really putting a mark on it so i wrote a few letters and then nothing happened i thought i'm not i'm gonna promise myself i'm gonna write 10 i'm gonna improve them on every letter and see what responses i get back and it was about the 12th letter <laughs> i persisted that i got an estate agent to call me and i okay. remember at that time being Obviously, I emailed the, some of them, but I, I wasn't. I, I presume I wasn't good at emailing because we try these big things, but yeah. if we don't have the proper training behind them, they're never going to work. And then we feel like failures. And I wish I knew this obviously earlier. But it's invest the time to know to do this thing properly before you try it, right? Because I, he called me, and I was, couldn't take on any more customers or staff, and I was like, just I, I was starting to have anxiety to answer my phone because like so many staff members were either ill or and all these things happened and alan called me and he was like i want you to come and give us a quote office cleaning and i was like i'll be honest with you like we're like so expensive we focus on quality and not quantity and he's like okay but i knew i couldn't fit him in like there was no way it was really stressing and he was like look just come and give me a quote just come over walk through meet me and we'll go from there i've had like you know 16 com different companies and I'm fed up now. I need a reliable company. And I, he called one of my testimonials on the actual letter, which I didn't oh, wow. think they did, <laughs> but he did. He said, and they cannot recommend you any higher. Please, I, I need somebody like you. So I went in and I saw him and I like tripled my quote. And that's where my 50 pound an hour came from. So I was like, <laughs> and then within a the month, I had like a free grant contract because, of course, they then there's loads of branches, and yeah. then the tendencies come in really big, up to eight million pound houses and celebrities. Yeah. So that yeah. one little letter kind of like changed everything for me. And this is what I now help my students do. I give them this letter. They just have to change a few things. Like yeah. if you don't know email marketing or LinkedIn marketing or Facebook marketing or anything yet, this yeah. is how you start. Nice and easy. You're going to get customers in, but also get the right customers. So don't go for a, like this massive offers that have 600 staff because you yeah, will not yeah. be able to cope if you don't have the staff. Start yeah. small and build up your confidence. And then once you get there, then you can smash out these big contracts. And who who were you targeting in that in that first the first sort of rounds of letters that you were sending? Did you identify okay it's going to be estate agents or it's going to be professional service businesses or it's going to be construction companies or whatever? Did you did you kind of define it like that or was it a bit of a no, scattergun approach and then it was, we'll see what I, happens? A to Z offices, <laughs> let me send them all a letter. <laughs> they all need to know about me. Just send out letters willy nilly. It wasn't even very structured. I got their addresses. At the time, I remember looking for to see if I could find the office manager name and stuff. Yeah. So I just delivered envelopes, but it was a bright envelope and like the stamp was skew. So it really had to stand out because I remember, I don't know how many people can relate with me. I was on a job when I first started once and not just once, this happened a few times. Yeah. And then I was cleaning away and then all of a sudden the post came and there's this leaflet that dropped through and this was another cleaning business. And I was like, oh, no, that was the first day of my life I actually stole. So I took that leaflet and put it on my pocket, <laughs> folded up very neatly so it wasn't bulky. And I was like, I can't do leaflets. I can't because of this reason, because everybody's going to take my leaflets. And that's when I looked at bulky mail because I was like, I can't have this happen, right? I need to stand out. I need to make it so first envelopes were now brown envelopes. I don't even know why. No response. But here's the thing. Eight years later, I got a phone call from uh, from a company that had my letter for eight years and they were like, oh, wow. so this is once again, it's how the customer feels about when they read this letter. It's nothing to do with call me now, King services. Oh, it is. Yeah. It's interesting their stuff. But this is about how we make them feel. So this is something that you, it's spreading your seeds. It's letting all of these people know that you function. Yeah. There's millions of reasons why they're not ready to have you or they already have somebody or they might not need you right now or whatever yeah. the case may be. There's there's loads of reasons why, but it's spreading your seeds and making them feel awesome while they read that letter. So when they do need you, who are they going to think of? And then obviously yeah. the process. And have you have you like with the students that you work with now, which we'll we'll come into? But have you uh, translated that letter into like email form, or do you still say, look, 
pen and so paper or with, get them printed, send them in the envelope. Like, yeah, it still so works. To start, to start off with this, because everybody is so afraid of this new GDPR rules. And actually yeah. just this morning, I left a message saying, look, there's no GDPR rules that's going to come and like like slap your wrist or give you this massive fine when you're small. Um, yeah. But trade, like I leave that decision up to them. But yeah. there's no nothing wrong with sending letters. It's a getting that attention. I myself get hundreds of emails every day. Do I look at everyone? Hell no. There's so many that I miss. And yeah. I know business owners are generally like that. So email marketing does work very well if you're ready for it and if you know what you're doing. If, yeah. like, so for instance, you sell emails, obviously you help people with email marketing, brilliant because you've been there, seen it, and you know what works. But yeah. if you've got no experience with it, it's not going to work for you. To translate that letter into an email, it probably have less chances. And at the moment, Jody sent out 150 and she got three customers in. Oh, wow. And for a starting business, I mean, it's not blowing the horns, but she's got three commercial yeah. customers. And now she's proven to herself, she's doing absolutely amazingly well. That's cool. And also um, this is higher customers, not just every customer. This is higher quality customers. So therefore, she's now earning what she's supposed to. So therefore, yeah. it enables her to get quality staff members rather than struggling with low-paying staff members that... So we'll never respect you in that yeah, kind of nice. thing. So when you got the opportunity with the estate agent, was was that the point at which you decided, okay, now I need to diversify my business from domestic because <laughs> you know there's only so much domestic I can I can do really. I want to yes. get into a little bit more lucrative like yeah. commercial and independency stuff. Was was that yeah. the sort of trigger? So I was like, I need more Allens because it's yeah. like, I, I, and I, every time I say that, I can hear the mirror go. But I was like, I need more Allens. Like, wow. But also, what I found was I put an advert out and I got some commercial cleaning staff coming in. Her name was Sarah. And I walked in to train her on the first night and she was like, What are you doing? I was like, I'm here to train you. Oh, she went, Train for what? I do cleaning. I go, oh, well, I'm here to train you. She went, Go home turn around and go home and i thought is that now her disrespecting me or does yeah. this now mean that she's a better quality star in any case to cut a long story so she was she, she said i know how to do the work ethics were there everything was there so i got better quality people in a sense i said i'm not saying other people aren't but sure. she was she already had the ethics the right values and morals that a good employee needed and she was like if you get a complaint you come and tell me and show me and i'll correct it but other than okay. that until you get a complaint i don't want to see you in this office you go back and do whatever you need to do and I had anxiety for that night because <laughs> I was like, yeah, I need but... to go and check her work because I was so focusing on, oh, I need to go and check her work. It was literally driving me insane. And I did go and check and it was perfectly fine. I was yeah. blown away, but I didn't tell her. I hope okay. she never sees this, but I never told her. But I had this anxiety because I was programmed by then to micromanage, to go and check every little detail, make sure they hoovered, make sure they locked up properly and make sure the alarm was done because it was a fob system and everything else. Yeah. And I was just trained to have this feelings around, oh, is she going to let me down? And that's when I discovered, oh, this, this, there's this other world that I could have. So she wasn't disrespecting me. She was telling me, like, I'm a better employee that you've ever had. Get yeah. out. I'll do my job. You'll pay me to do a job. I mean, I did pay her very well, but yeah. still. And I, ad I remember advertising, do you need a couple of hours away from your staff at night? And that's how it started. Okay. <laughs> nice mums needing rest from their kids at night and i have so many responses so anybody else looking for a nighttime staff <laughs> that works yeah it's a good tip <laughs> ah nice awesome so and you mentioned as well that you uh, you split the business up so domestic end of tenancy and office cleaning like was that quite difficult to manage rather than just focusing on on one particular one particular sector no, it made it easier because we knew the domestic had a system here, the office cleaning had a system here, and the end of tenancy worked completely differently. And actually, that's what I teach the guys as well. So there's, there's three different things that you do for every aspect. Of course, domestic is more loving and caring, and then you go a bit more professional yeah. with the office and end of tenancy. And then the, the three kind of like different systems. No, it was easier, but also I was so scared of going that registered because, of course, we were like, oh, my God, what if yeah, I need yeah. customers? It was easy. as It's, it's like anything in business or anything in life, if it's something we haven't done, we're going to be yeah. so afraid of it. You need to train yourself, despite this fear, to just go and take action. And also, like, we drive every single day on this road. And the other side of this road, there's other cars coming, right, that we can literally instantly, we can be gone. And we're trusting this complete strangers, the other side of the road. Yeah. And there's no fear. Now, if we can train our brain to have no fear for this, 
surely we can go back registered, right? That's so true. So this is about training your mind as using your tools and using your have an app update. Hang on a minute. I can do that. I now want to take on this employee and I'm scared, but I yeah. literally put my life in danger every single day. You know, I was brought up in South Africa. I still watch my back. But I can, I've got this fear thing that obviously was building to me. So it's, it's, it's now knowing that I need to get over that. I literally get in a car and I drive. And I yeah. put everybody in my car in danger. I'm in control. Yet I think I'm going to lose control by getting a new employee or going back registered. Yeah, and so yeah. it's training your mind to think differently, like set your mind rather than having a mindset or believing I've got this set mindset. It yeah. can easily be changed every single day. So I know, obviously, we've touched on it a few times now in terms of the students that you work with. Just before we jump into, you know, your approach with coaching and how you help cleaning business owners reach their, their first 100K, I just want to find out what was the, the, the sort of one decision that you took in your cleaning business that, that had the biggest impact on, on the growth of your business? I know, obviously, that there was a mindset shift in terms of the, the staff element. And then there was discovering that the sales lessons worked and how that opened the door to commercial. Like, was there one particular incident or one series of events that kind of took you from where you were to, to reaching the heights that you, you didn't think at the time that you were able to reach? So it was a mind shift shift and it was something that somebody said to me and repeatedly I've heard throughout my business. And that was... Focus on what you're good at and get everybody else to do everything else. And that wasn't reality for me. Or I kept thinking, I can't afford to have somebody come and fold my laundry and clean my house. I couldn't afford to do this. I couldn't afford to get books. I was trying to do everything myself. And exactly what I teach my students now as well. Let's get you earning that money first. And then you concentrate on what you're really good at. Stop doing the things that you're not so good at because you're just mm -hmm. going to keep feeling like you're failing and you're not that great. It's focus on what you're really good at and delegate everything else. Be really good at that. If that's the one thing you do awesome, is yeah. get other people to help you run your business so they're better than you in those areas that you're not so great at. Stop. I was trying too much to learn too much, and then mm. I wasn't getting the results I needed. And they're like, oh, well, that didn't work. But some of these jobs, don't be trying to be a HR professional and a lawyer and a this and a that, and you just can't physically do that all. So I think my biggest brainwave came when I actually realized, although some people tell you all the time, Focus on what you're really good at and get everybody else to do everything else. And how long into you starting your cleaning business did, did it take for you to, to realize that? Two years. Oh, really? <laughs> a long time. I want to okay. teach people this so much quicker now. I yeah. teach them from the gate. This is what I teach them. Okay. Took me so two let, let's, let's talk about that. Like, Tell me a little bit more about the, the coaching to 100K that, that you provide to cleaning business owners. So it's a course basically dedicated to step-by-step -step teaching and mentoring. Yeah. So I will focus on getting you to a certain place first. So everything I do is very, very small steps, but also I want you to do something very small, very little bit of courage needed. I normally call it titivation. So get your posture right. <laughs> and then I'm going to take you, get, get you to take a little step and then you're going to prove to yourself that you can do it. Once you've seen that, we go to the next step. And it's literally a step-by-step -step process. And everything is focused on you getting that result. I'm not going to throw a lot of information at you. And then they go, oh, my God, I'm overwhelmed. I get that a lot. So yeah. the, the Path to 100K program is different in the sense of it's all live lessons. And you come, you're going to give me your information. And I'm going to say, do this, 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 this. Like increasing prices without losing income. That's a yeah. very big lesson. Actually, we're having that lesson this Thursday. And I literally show you exactly how you do that so you never lose any income because that fear factor is completely taken away i take the fear out of every situation but we do it in little bits at a time i'm not going to teach you how to do get your staff in if you don't earn the right money first because mm -hmm. if you don't you're not going to attract the right quality staff and it's going to end up struggling so everything we do is with a purpose to set yourself up as well to set their business up so that they look more professional and they can get a 95% yes. <laughs> so the system is worked, all the emails, everything is written for them. So they set it all up behind the scenes so that we work smarter rather than harder. And then they can see how they're growing throughout this whole process and how much they've actually achieved in little bits at a time because it's about that little bit at a time, not how much time a week can you give me. It's give me 30 minutes twice a week. In increments if you need to like and also we focus on obviously having tools in the bag when the shit heats the fan how do yeah. we deal with that how can you prepare yourself to then cope with that once again it's about the six hours to chop down a tree spend five hours sharpening that axe let's get you ready what do you have in place to to help yourself 
then going to chop that tree down. So talk to me about the 95% yes that I'm, I'm curious to see like what, <laughs> what do, what's involved in that like clearly it's not just it's not just the sales aspect. There's there's a lot of preparation before that. Yes. So just give me an outline, like and a, a bird's so, eye view as to as to what's involved to get to that point. So it's about you can never tell a customer how good you are cleaning. Everybody sure. says they're good, and this was the probably the problem I had. So this is about people also not knowing what to charge as well as everything else. So it starts literally from the first communication you have for that customer, and literally taking them through a process, taking that customer through a process. By the time you give them the actual quote, they will love you. And also, you're not going to give them the weekly quote before. I train all of my staff for the first two weeks to clean at a higher standard for more money. Yeah. And then you give them a quote. And then you know exactly the customer by then loves you. They can see your standards. They know you. They know how your business works. You've already built that know, like, and trust sequence. And I think that's the most important thing in business that people miss is that know, like, and trust sequence. Never give a quote over the phone until mm. you've built that relationship with them. By the time you give them that price, I mean, it doesn't matter who you are. If you say, if you just come to my house right now and give me a quote, if I don't know who you are, you're going to sound expensive. I yeah. mean, but if I know you a little bit first and I feel at ease with you, I trust you, I'm like, huh, I know her, I like her, like you match their energy, there's so much involved, like when you shake their hand and everything, how you do it, it then becomes, huh, I really like them, it's so much easier because people buy from people, yeah. friends buy from friends, it doesn't matter if they're the CEO of Google, <laughs> who they are, they're still yeah. human, we are, we've got basic needs, we want to be loved, we want to feel safe and we want to be feel part of the community and therefore we can provide that for them then we're going to get that 95% yes at a higher rate as well. Because obviously with the letters, we're targeting higher valued customers. We're not just targeting any customers. But with the system, what that means is they know you, they like you, and they trust you by the time you're going to give them that money. And therefore, the percentage is a lot higher. Now, there is going to be a couple of customers that's going to go, oh, that's still too high. That's fine. Sure. You can deal with that. But you're never going to satisfy everybody. Now, yeah. this only works for the letter, letter system. If you're going to send out emails, that's not going to work as well, <laughs> obviously, if you if you change your tactics. But this is very easy for them to get oozed into this to make them ready for the bigger marketing things that obviously is to come. I guess once you have the resources, right? So you get them to 95% yes, you're able to charge the right prices, and then you have the resources available, not just to employ the right staff, to get the right yeah. support, but to actually diversify your your approach to sort of winning new customers and i guess that's that's what all of that prepares you for right yes because what i say to the girls is like when you first start or is what makes you feel like amazing like what means a really good week for new customers at a yeah. higher rate like they still can't <laughs> believe it so let's focus on what you're good at i'm giving you everything you need like this i literally show them how to stand in the mirror and practice this and i do take the mic out of myself for saying mirror the way i do also milk my partner with this. <laughs> but is stand in front of the mirror and practice these things and some i used to say fake it until you make it but it's not a such thing because you're saying to yourself that you're fake and we're not fake right it's about practicing how to say the right words and how to answer that phone go and stand in front of the mirror use your children use your partner practice these things like we all had to practice this how to do this when we first started in business nobody went like ha ha i know what to do yeah, I just yeah. this morning and bang it's practice <laughs> and learning all these different things i i practice body language i practice cues how people look at you and everything yeah. to know what to look for oh like when do i listen when do you not listen like when can you speak and it's all coming from the, the customer's perspective so it's not about obviously what's important to us it's not really about your business it's mm. really about them so it's it sounds that. like you're very much focused around the sort of communication and human relations aspect right and yeah. and sort of developing those skills in addition to providing tools to be able to deliver those skills in mm. front of a, a client is is that is that fair yes. to say Yes, because I'm so obsessed with customer service. Really bad when I go into places and the customer service is bad because I normally want to give them my opinion. But yeah, I think it's so important. Like with the cleaning business, it's not just about cleaning. It's about having this whole service that makes them feel amazing. And if you just say the right words, I'll say them a bit differently. And this is not something that you can go out there and really train for. Like I didn't do a kind of like one customer service course and was like all amazing at it. Yeah, it's yeah. years of dealing with customers, years of dealing with horrible customers and customers that 
swear at you. That didn't happen too often, but we did have the odd occasion. As how do you deal with these customers that makes a difference and protecting that reputation? Like it was my baby, protecting yeah, yeah. that at all costs. That was very important to me. And so what, what does good customer service look like to you? Oh, just making the customer feel awesome all okay. the time. It's not about just sending an email reply, oh, we're going to come clean. It's literally making that person feel like that, that they're just one, not just a number on a spreadsheet, making yeah. every single customer feel like they're the most important customer, really like bragging about them, really going out of your way in a certain way. So say, for instance, in the first two cleans, I trained my girls to leave like a shower, Mr. Muscle Shower Shine, with a sticky note on in the shower and with a sticky note with a smiley face saying, please use me every day in the shower. And with a smiley face on it. And it's completely, literally so out of the cuff. But it made, I had so many messages with pictures of these. And like a pot of, say, the pink paste in the kitchen with a little non-scrub scarab pad saying, please use me on your hob and your sink when we're not here. But it's just little things that are like, oh, no way. I had so many messages of little things that you can do to really yeah. improve that. When you do end of tenancy cleaning, like have a card printed with you on there. The personalized aspect has to be included. And then kind of like, like welcome home letter, a note in there for them with a voucher. You can use mm. again within a year, but they're welcome to your new home and leave them a very little small basket of items they can use to help them in the house. But yeah. it's that personalized aspect very much. I'm very hot on that. So going a little bit of the extra mile. <laughs> and what's one of the biggest challenges, the students that you work with, what, what's one of the biggest challenges that you consistently see and have to help sort of students overcome? The fact that they don't charge enough and therefore they think, they think they're charging enough, but the problem is people start their own cleaning businesses and then it gets to like 15, 16 pounds an hour and they're like, now I need to employ because I need somebody. The problem mm. is right there is they don't earn enough. They're still charging self-employed wages. Therefore, they're getting people that's kind of like not very good work ethics because these people don't understand how work works. <laughs> yeah. You turn up, you do your job and then therefore they struggle. And this holds them back. And I see there was most people coming to me. So my five-day challenge, I actually teach them on day one how to do this. And people are literally on the challenge. There was one guy called James. He literally got all his customers to £20 an hour just by what I teach them in the five-day challenge. So I want wow. people to come and just do what I like. This one thing, it's free. So you can yeah. change your life. So this is the obviously not earning enough and then struggling with the employees they think the problem is that there's no quality good quality staff out there but it's if you don't earn enough enough money first to be able to employ decent staff because yeah. these decent staff they know their value they're not going to work for peanuts they want to come in and smash the job and do really amazingly well they don't want to be paid very little money they just start their own businesses which everybody's yeah, yeah. doing we need to entice those people in give me an example of the sort of the price disparity like what what's the lowest that a student has come to you with and what what on average like 20 pound is a marker but what what's the highest that you've gotten that you've gotten a student to be able to charge you mentioned charging 50 quid an hour for yourself before which is awesome yeah. it'd be nice to win a few more of those contracts but give me give me an example of the sort of spread right so basically so i have had staff i've had students come to me that's only 12 pounds an hour and actually the right. lowest i think at the moment is like 14 and basically it's to get them to get the concept of we go up to 20 there are people that's on 30 and going up to 35 when i say charge 50 pounds an hour I, I know nobody believes me and i actually had somebody laugh at me one day and i was like well okay it's having a minimum charge in place and just get very strict with, like, I'm not going below that minimum charge. Oh, you want us for an hour? Here's a minimum charge. So therefore, if people just want you for an hour, you get that £50 an hour very easily. Yeah. And, and I have had customers, because I've got so known for my reputation for being awesome, if we mm. did go and do like an hour of a job, it was literally, we had some customers challenge us. And in my company, if they didn't get back to it, so for instance, they say to us, oh, this is really expensive. I will invite them for three weeks to get another company in because I was that confident about my services, get another company in, call me in three weeks. But if you get us back, it will be more. It will now be 60 pounds. So, I mean, it's your choice. Yeah. And we had so many customers come back to us and say, oh. and then I got the <laughs> even higher price. Yes, please. Like we're desperate. Can you come back? Because what we offered was the consistency yeah. of the standards. And I was really hot on my goals being hot on this as well, but also the passion for when these customers leave presents and, and, and praise them, it was well broadcasted and they felt amazing for that as well. It's just building that relationship and making them feel like they're a partner in my business, not just a staff member. So they became yeah, yeah. part so they had they they wanted to the business to grow no nice well look i think the price aspect definitely is is an area i was speaking with louise 
Trehan. She's one of the founder directors of the, the DCBN, the Domestic Cleaning Business Network. And she said, you know, one of the biggest challenges for domestic cleaners is, is getting out of the mindset of charging 10 quid an hour because it's just not profitable. I mean, it's not even a living wage. Once you add in all of your costs, your expenses, your travel, the supplies and all that kind of stuff, it works out then to a charge less than you're paying an apprentice. So actually understanding how to price properly is key. And then, as you say, like having the mindset and having the confidence to be able to actually charge and, and realize that, you know, your the service that you're offering is, is worth that value. You know, that's, that is a big hurdle to overcome, I'm sure. So this is what I teach my students. Like if they don't have the guts to say this to customers, I give them a written quote that will explain that very well in the quote. And that's how they win that contract. So if, if they don't first of all have that and then they can still see, they can still win it on, until they build that. I, I call it a little confidence muscle here in the back. Nice. <laughs> Next to the Vegas nerve. And this is just to to get them to build the muscle because this is a big problem for them to go from 12,000 an hour to 20. Like, no, it's not possible. So yeah, they need to yeah. prove to themselves that it's possible. No, that's very true. Well, look, Ilse, we've been going for just over 45 minutes. So I've got one more question before I ask you a couple of quick fire questions, if you don't mind. No. And that is like, what's one lesson that your experience running your cleaning business and also with your coaching experience, what, what's one lesson that you think every cleaning business owner should learn? Focus on what ha healthy habits, oh, I should say healthy, focus on what habits you have that prepares you for the bad days because you're okay. only as good as your bad days. So expand on that a little bit. Like what, what would you suggest in terms of, or what has so, worked for you and what has worked for other people oh, in terms so, of these sorts of habits? I saw your morning routine. And I was like, oh, mine looks like that. Everybody thinks I'm oh, absolutely nice. mad. <laughs> so I started off with, I had a bad back cleaning, obviously. I think everybody does it. And I started exercising because of that. And yeah. the results were mind blowing. Like I, within like five weeks, I was like so much more energy. My back didn't ache. I felt better. Obviously I was doing a bit of weightlifting and I was like, wow. And then I incorporated meditation, a working schedule. Like I started the time management classes because mm. it's what I did to prepare myself and that helped. And I still have those habits today. And I've made, obviously as you go, you add more habits, but it's reading all the time about these good books like seven habits of highly efficient people like mm. get these books on audio and listen to audios all day long about how you can better yourself because it's not about that audio right now there right then it's stopping that little ego that voice in your head telling you you can't do it telling you not yeah, good yeah. enough telling you you're never going to charge that prices telling you that little oh you would never achieve that and actually what that is it's just your little inner child is still keeping you very safe and you hear your big person want to go out and like rule the world and your little person, your emotions are saying, no, that's scary. Yeah. So it's learning about this, learning how to love yourself in the sense of not this mucky, mushy stuff, but appreciate <laughs> yourself for who you are. Be grateful for right now, this minute. And everybody should go and watch this or download okay. the book, The Secret. So you live yeah. in this atmosphere of everything is going to happen in any case. There's no doubt in your mind. And when you live in this happy place and, you know, you're so grateful for what you have right now, things started to happen. That's when you start feeling lucky. You're like, huh, these things are happening. And I wish I did that actually before, but healthy habits and certainly a really good sleep routine really put me on the map and changed how I turned up every day. I turned up very like powerful almost instead of just letting life lead me. I yeah. decided I didn't have time to exercise. I got up at five in the morning. And I know a lot of people go, I'm not doing that. That's exactly say what I said, but I knew that I needed to try these things to be better. Like if yeah. I wanted to be better, I can't operate at level two and want a cleaning level at level four. I need to get there. I need to make myself better to get there. And then adding eventually all of these stack up. And I remember listening to the books at first. I used to feel so overwhelmed because it's so much you need to do to be better. Yeah. And then I got to a point where I was like, huh, I need a better book now. I'm doing all of those things already. <laughs> I need, now I need better and more. So that's when I started going to different books. But I would say if you struggle with this voice of like, I'm not good enough or you don't believe in yourself, Mel Robbins podcast is awesome. Listen to her, do mm. the high five habit, yeah, go yeah. and do the five second rule, go and do these things, experiment with them, not just one day. 
it's just something that you do when you first start and then it becomes who you are. And once yeah. it becomes who you are, you're on stop. I like the high five rule and uh, the five second countdown, Mel Robbins. I, I use that in the mornings when I yes. don't want to get up. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> like a and it's amazing life. how it gets you out of bed, right? It does. It, yes. it really works. It really works. <laughs> no, that's cool. Well, look, let me just ask a, a couple of quick fire questions. The first one is what are the three non-negotiable skills that you think are essential to growing a cleaning business? I think you're knowing of your self-worth, so your mindset, knowing your numbers and knowing how to become a leader or to be a leader very well. And what is what is one piece of advice you would, have, you would give to like a younger version of yourself before you went on this journey with cleaning and coaching? What's one piece of advice that you'd give to yourself after everything you've learned? The car advice, like uh, you're going to let fear stop you. Like fear will always be there, but we need to learn to love that feeling because that means you're actually growing and you're going right direction. And it doesn't mean if you don't have fear, you're not growing, but learn to love the process of, I am just going to go, what if? Screw it, just do it. Like Richard Branson says, right? (laughs) just, just, Just go for it because, and if it doesn't work the first time, try it 20 million times more because the problem is we do it three or four times oh and then we feel like a failure then we don't want to try again the problem yeah. is we need to know our outcome we need to know what our business is going to look like in, in 10 years time or a year's time let's not go too big what what is it going to be look like in a year's time in my course it's 100k we work you backwards how many customers do you need what do you need to do to make this happen and then yeah. we work one step at a time to help you get there you need to have your sad nerve it's like when you have a car and you drive and you put a postcode in, where you're going. Yep. But if you don't know where you're going, you're like, the car's like, hmm, yeah, it's not yeah. even going to take off because yeah, you've yeah. got your end destination. You're sitting on the driveway, not but getting anywhere. Not, definitely, but also knowing that the steering wheel's in front of you and you can steer yourself in any direction you want. But if you get up every single day and doing the same route, it's like a muddy route. And if the tractor, the, the, the holes are so deep now in this road that you're doing. And if you want to succeed, just turn that steering wheel one degree, one degree a day. Do something yeah. different to enhance yourself or your business. And all it takes is one degree, a little bit to get off that road. Because if you do the same thing, you're going to get the same results. And it's just enhancing and just trying to improve yourself to get yourself up to the next level. Then everything changes. And mindset is something that you can set. It's not something that you have or yeah. that's holding you back. And the past is the past. And the past never equals the future. Nice. Even if you failed loads of times before, it doesn't matter. You start right now. Every single day is a new, fresh start for all of us to start again and to smash it. Perfect. Well, look, Ilse, thank you very much for your time. Where's the best place for people to find you online? So the best place is probably Facebook, my Facebook page, or in Manager on my personal page. On and cool. Well, we'll stick all the links in the show notes, and also your your five day challenge. It, does that run continuously? Do you like run it once a month? What What's the deal with that? So I've I've sort of ran it twice live, and then more people are like, oh, we want it again. So okay. I'm doing it again in the month on the 24th. I'm not sure it's going to run every month or continuously. It's kind of like very much up in the air of how my schedule is with my students. Of course, my classes are live, but it's there for anybody that wants to for free. I do offer my program at the end, and I'm quite yeah. honest about that from the beginning. Yeah. But the first four days is mind blowing as far as mindset is concerned. Just come and learn and just change your life. Cool. All right. Well, we'll include the link to that in the show notes as well. And to be perfectly honest, I might just sign up to it myself just to <laughs> just see what the goodies are. I'm inspired. But look, you'll say thank you very much for your time. Uh, it's been a really interesting conversation. Appreciate you taking almost an hour out of your day. And so thank you very well, much. We'll season, right? leave it at that and we'll see you next time. Yes. Thank you very much for having me and all the best. And everybody else, please just make sure you put your mindset first and you can do it. You can do anything. All you need to do is think about it. Perfect. That's a great ending. Thanks a lot, guys. See you next time. See you. Bye. Thanks to you guys for listening to the Growth Lab podcast. You can access the show notes and resources via the link in the episode description. And if you got some value from this podcast, please pay it forward and share it with others across social media or leave a rating and review on whatever podcast platform you listen to. Hope you enjoy and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.